Dreams of flight have captured the imagination of humankind for centuries. Legends of man's attempts at flight have transcended time from the ancient Greeks to tales of early 20th century experiments with kites. In the early 1900s, aviators proved the airplane's worth as a weapon of war and a mail carrier. Aircraft quickly became a means of transporting passengers, and by the early 1940s, one could get from New York City to Los Angeles in a matter of hours. World War II demanded quick, powerful, strong, and resilient aircraft. New equipment, materials, and designs emerged from this challenging period of history, resulting in many aircraft that are still flying workhorses today. Advances in aviation made incredible strides during the 20th century, and during the 21st century, man continues to reach for the stars. On Sunday, October 21, 2007, the Evergreen Aviation Museum will induct five exceptional Oregonians into the Oregon Aviation Hall of Honor for their outstanding contributions and achievements in the field of aviation and air power. Native Oregonian Starl C. Austin, Jr. enlisted in the Army Air Corps Civilian Pilot Program during World War II. After qualifying as an aviation cadet and completing pilot training, Austin became a P-47 instructor pilot. Later, joining the 9th Air Force in Belgium, First Lieutenant Austin flew the rugged P-47 Thunderbolt in the European theater. Providing air to ground support and destroying key German targets, he helped pave the way for the Allies' advance across Belgium, Holland, and Germany, including the Battle of the Bulge and the Rhine River crossing. Completing 58 combat missions, Austin received the Air Medal with seven oak leaf clusters, various campaign ribbons, and the Belgian Fourragier for his efforts. Austin later studied aeronautical engineering while serving as a charter member of the Oklahoma Air National Guard's 125th Fighter Squadron. Activated during the Korean War in 1950, Major Austin commanded the squadron that flew the Fox Able route across the North Atlantic to Europe, bolstering young NATO forces along the Iron Curtain. Returning to Oregon in 1953, Austin soon took command of the Oregon Air National Guard's 142nd Fighter Group, while also serving the Oregon Military Department as Chief of the Administrative Division. Promoted to Brigadier General in 1963, Austin became the first Air Guardsman to serve as Assistant Adjutant General, later serving as Deputy Adjutant General. The non-commissioned officers of the Air National Guard of the United States honored Austin with the Order of the Sword in 1980. The Air Force's Distinguished Service Medal and the European African Middle East Campaign Medal with four battle stars are a few of many other awards presented to Austin over his remarkable 37-year military career. Retiring from the Air Guard in 1980, he served as director of the Oregon Department of Veterans Affairs until 1984, and at age 87, still served as a member of the Governor's Veterans Advisory Committee. Lawrence Campbell developed a passion for flying at an early age, building model airplanes and studying pictures of fighter aircraft. Moving with his family from Oklahoma to Oregon during World War II, Campbell attended Washington High School and learned to fly with the Civil Aeronautics Patrol. Now, while studying electrical engineering at the University of Oregon, Campbell passed the Army Air Corps pilot exam in 1944 and attended the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama, learning to fly 86 aircraft. Campbell later attended advanced flight training at Randolph Field, flying the P-47 Thunderbolt, and learned to fly the P-51 Mustang at Williams Field in Arizona. In 1948, he graduated from the U.S. Air Force Fighter Pilot School at Williams Air Force Base and became the first African-American pilot to fly a jet fighter. He later marveled at the silent power of the Lockheed F-80 Shooting Star, 
compared to the roaring sound of World War II's prop-driven aircraft. First Lieutenant Campbell returned to Oregon and his studies in electrical engineering at the University of Portland. Starting a family, he joined the Air National Guard and became a flying safety officer in the 403rd Troop Carrier Wing at Portland Air Base. After a brief sojourn as an accident analyst with Boeing, Major Campbell became an air safety investigator with the National Transportation Safety Board and moved to Alaska in 1963. Campbell organized and led relief missions for the Alaska Air National Guard after the 1964 Good Friday earthquake and the 1967 Fairbanks flood. He investigated some of Alaska's most publicized air disasters, including Juno's Alaska Air 727 crash in 1971. Colonel Campbell became the first African American in the nation to assume command of a National Guard unit in 1972. He received the Alaska Legion of Merit Medal in 1992, the state's highest military honor. In the golden days of aviation, a farmer's open field or a straight, untraveled road served early aviators as landing strips. Through the thoughtful planning of men like Colonel James Church, today's airports consist of thousands of acres of land with billions of dollars of investment in special facilities operated around the clock by thousands of workers. In 1968, after a distinguished 26-year career in the U.S. Air Force as an airfields engineer, Colonel Church retired and joined the Port of Portland at a time of rapid commercial aviation expansion. Over the next 18 years, Church served as the Director of Engineering, Planning and Research, as well as the Director of Aviation, overseeing the operations of the Portland International, Hillsboro and Troutdale airports. Airports of the era craved an infusion of capital to serve the growing fleet of commercial aircraft and a population that demanded to fly for business and pleasure. Church developed an innovative financing and operating agreement between the Port of Portland and the airlines, which provided funding for both the day-to-day -day operations and the capital needs of its airports. Church's pioneering idea provided the airlines with input about airport operations and growth and supplied the Port of Portland with a steady source of funds to achieve its goals. From DC-3s and P-51s, such as 747s and F-15s, the Portland International Airport continues to evolve and grow. Many airports across the country have emulated Church's groundbreaking plan, which served as the vehicle for millions of dollars of capital and operating funds for Portland International Airport enabling 14 million people to pass through its gates in 2006. When Church retired in 1984, an Oregon congressional delegation recognized him for distinguished service with the Port of Portland and the U.S. Air Force. With a pen, engineer scale, dedication, and creativity, Church truly helped to create the airports that serve Oregonians so well today. Major General Chester E. McCarty amassed over 12,000 flying hours during his career, with flights in nearly every type of United States Air Force aircraft, including F-100s and F-104 fighters. Serving in the Army Air Corps during World War II, McCarty worked as a staff officer with the North African Wing of the Air Transport Command and as commander of a chain of air bases in the Middle East. During the Korean War, McCarty commanded the 403rd Troop Carrier Wing, which flew hazardous combat cargo missions in C-47s, landing with supplies and taking off with injured personnel 
from low tide beaches in enemy territory. Subjected to heavy enemy ground fire while delivering supplies to United Nations forces, McCarty successfully led 25 C-119 flying boxcars during the Punchbowl Area resupply mission. Directing tactical air command operations throughout the world with a fleet of C-124s, C-130s, and C-123s, McCarty guided the 18th Air Force's Dewline airlift in the Arctic through more than 700 landings on frozen lakes and bays. McCarty also piloted the first Air Force aircraft flown over the South Pole, a C-124 Globemaster dropping cargo during Operation Deep Freeze to build the South Pole Station. As commander of the 12th Air Force, the world's first all-supersonic force, McCarty deployed a major composite air strike force during the Formosa Straits crisis and using air-to-air -air refueling helped to stop and contain the area's shooting war. Accepting an assignment with the Pentagon as deputy for Air Force Reserve Affairs, McCarty later became Chief of Staff, United States Air Forces in Europe. McCarty's many decorations include the Distinguished Service Medal, the Legion of Merit, the Distinguished Flying Cross, Bronze Star Medal, and the Air Medal with four oak leaf clusters. Retiring in 1966, McCarty passed away on April the 5th, 1999, and received full burial honors at Arlington National Cemetery. Remember being a kid flying a balsa wood plane powered by a rubber band? Chances are that little toy originated from the American Junior Aircraft Company based in Portland, Oregon. Challenged with a $5 wager that he could not devise a craft capable of flying 200 feet, Neville's E. Jim Walker founded American Junior Aircraft Company with the slogan, Out of the Box and Into the Sky in 60 Seconds. When Japanese imitations of his reed and silk aircraft model flooded the market, the resourceful Walker modified his craft, named it the AJ Bomber, and began a flying sales program. Launching two or three balsa gliders into flight about the room of a toy buyer, Walker skillfully returned them to his left hand and then said, any kid over seven years old can do the same thing. This little model will do 19 different stunts. It's made to retail for a nickel. Walker sold millions. Walker's U-Control system allowed level flight in a circle and upward or downward maneuvers. An operator, using the U-Control system, could make the American Junior Fireball do loops and dives like a pro. The all-balsa, rubber band-powered interceptor with wings that unfolded for flight helped train Army Air Corps aircraft gunners during World War II. Launched from ships at sea, the Fireball became a target for the Navy and 14-foot wingspan American Junior radio-controlled target drones also served the war effort. Following the war, Walker created the popular, quickly assembled and ready-to-fly Fire Baby. Walker possessed 31 patents before his death in 1958, including a sonic-controlled glider, radio-controlled lawnmower, throttle-controlled engines, and the u really hand-controlled. His pioneering ready-to-fly models encouraged young and old to have fun while learning about flight and continue to inspire us today with the dream to fly. From barnstormers to military aviators who lost their lives in the service of our country, and astronauts risking their lives to further man's goal to reach the stars, aviation continues to influence our lives today. Aircraft help us to fertilize crops and assist in eradicating disease. They provide emergency evacuations and humanitarian relief. Aviation in space allows for experiments that will aid in the development of future technologies. Today, we can fly in personal jets or soar through the skies in a glider. Aircraft are faster, stronger, and higher flying than ever before. 
Multitudes of Oregon aviators devoted their lives to the pursuit of all forms of flight during the 20th century. This year's inductees into the Oregon Aviation Hall of Honor joined 25 outstanding individuals honored since 2003. The Evergreen Aviation Museum salutes their dedication and passes on their inspiration for the continued dream of flight during the 21st century and beyond.